thank you for being here. We, we have some time on the other side of this break, but... I was just tweeting that I'm on. Okay, good. <laughs> you, did you read it? Have you had a chance to even look at it yet? The five pages of high crimes and misdemeanors that would be the, the transcript of this call? The next and latest damning the thing The transcript that... of a call... But wait, has he released the transcript yet? Yes. Just, just came just, out. Just it just came out. Just, just came happened. Out. We'll give you a chance to read over Fantastic. that because you're gonna you're gonna love the five pages of treason um, here. Okay, this five is five pages. I, I mean, just, it's it's five pages I'm of filthy treason that they did not include. Like, um, hello. Hey, who's this? They didn't include all that stuff. So it's redacted, presumably, and I assume he talked to the Ukrainian president first because that that's kind of a big issue. You can't go around releasing transcripts. like. So I'm assuming the Ukrainian president, he may have wanted some stuff. For, is it redacted? No. It's, it's not, not redacted. No. It's not. It's five pages So they pages can't of, even complain about that. Oh, God bless the Ukrainian president. I mean, not president. that I can tell that it's redacted. Well, I what mean, what we don't know if al- there's already because that's what they're going to attack. They're going to claim if right. there's any redaction for like, hey, how are you? How's the weather? Um, if they no, that's redacted how- that stuff, I promise you, I'm already <laughs> anticipating what will because I predictable, right? Mm-hmm. It's yes. so predictable, and and already we're being told that hold on a second, this is not a verbatim, uh, this is not a ver- verbatim it's of no. the conversation that it was notes being made in the situation room by individuals listening in on the conversation. So how do we know? Like four or five people, are, are, they all get together afterwards, oh, I guess, and they compare notes and let's type up the transcript. Right. And there is some, hey, draining the swamp in the Ukraine. Yeah, that's great. Right. The Ukrainian president used the phrase drain the swamp. I country. just want to know if the president bragged about the size of his inaugural crowd. <laughs> Hang on, that may be on page five. <laughs> Scrolls down to see. We've been hijacked by talk of impeachment regarding, you know, some conversation that the president of the United States had with the Ukrainian president. More on that in a second. What's what's ticking me off is it's ruining my opening question to Ann Coulter. Well, we'll make it. I, and let's well, decide. I just, are you still pissed at Trump? Do we have a wall yet? Well, we've got some. No, we've got a little bit. No, there's like a couple of miles. There's a hint of wall. fences. <laughs> there's I mean, a there's a wallet, wall. kind of. Um, how do you think that would have gone over as the chant at his rallies? Hint of wall. <laughs> hint <laughs> of wall. Hints of border fencing. <laughs> you know, but uh, you know, I go back to. Uh, you know, half of something is better than all of nothing, right? Oh, don't worry. I'm not saying, therefore, we have to support treasonous Democrats. <laughs> or a socialist. If I mean, that's on. where you're going. No, I'm just... I'm, I'm. You feel? In, it, do you feel compelled to? Because I, you know, obviously we follow you. We read the columns. We read the books. Twitter you feel feed. compelled to continue to to just kind of press well, the I, thumb for on the. One thing I think this is the last fourteen months we have to try to get anything out of him. I mean, if after making these promises, winning by eighty thousand votes, eighty thousand votes across four states, and that was with Democrats sitting back and not voting. I mean, he, uh, incumbents usually win. The Democrats are doing everything in their power to make sure he wins with this insane impeachment inquiry over I just, it's just it's hilarious um, put a pin on in that and move on yet and still um, I, he wouldn't have won that election if his if his chant had been and don't worry I'm bringing Jared Kushner to the White House he's gonna be my I'm gonna hire more Goldman Sachs guys than Bush and Obama combined yay yay more Goldman Sachs more Go- and I promise I will never end the carried interest loophole total gift to hedge fund managers he was the only I mean look I wrote in Trump we trust that was obviously heavily about immigration I loved his campaign Everything he said on his campaign was great. I love his tweets today. Everything the media attacks him for. But he's not doing it. He promised his first day in office over and over and over again he would sign um, the executive order to repeal President Obama's unconstitutional executive order amnestying people, amnestying, quote, dreamers. I want the dreamers to go first. Um, I would I would deport the dreamers before the felons um, because at least, you know, you catch an illegal immigrant felon, we'll say, okay, you got me. No, the dreamers, they're on TV, on the cover of Time magazine. They have shows on MTV. How dare you not give me amnesty? How dare you? <laughs> they're like that little, that little Greta girl on global warming. No, them first. Um, Obama himself admitted, I don't have the authority to grant amnesty to anyone. See, remember, he kept explaining that for six years. I can't do it. It's unconstitutional. You're asking me to do something that's unconstitutional. And then year six, what the hell? I'll do something unconstitutional. 
Is that a heavy lift to get President Trump, Mr. Build the Wall, I'll deport them so fast, your head will... What, who stopped him from signing it? Was that Mitch McConnell? Was that Paul Ryan? No, I mean, I love the stuff he says, I guess. I, I, we'll see. I mean, if it's all, as, as the saying is, it's later than you think. I hope that some president will someday actual, actually do the stuff that Trump promises. All right, so who, in your estimate, would be the best person to be president next? Is it him again? Oh, well, I as mean, long as you mention it, Chris Kobach, he's running for Senate in, in Kansas. Well, there's a I name mean, that comes across our minds every <laughs> once in a while. He's magnificent. And there, there are a few others that are great. I like, I love Tom Cotton. He's a little too much of a um, permanent war guy for me, this neocon thing. But if we could put him in charge of domestic policy, he's been very good on immigration. Um, All right, who can beat Trump, I guess, is the next oh, question. I oh, you mean of the Democrats? No, no, no. Well, anybody in your mind, Republican, could you put up oh, against Trump? Oh, I don't want to beat Trump. Trump. I thought you were talking about... She yeah, just wants, to, beat, she just wants to beat up on Trump. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want, I want to put pressure on him over the next 14 months. I don't think, I don't think he will feel more of an obligation to his base in a second term than he has in his first term. So look, we got 14 months, and yeah, of course we're going to vote for him. <laughs> Who else would you vote for? Well, but <laughs> as much as I want him to just, you know, with executive authority, accomplish all of these things too. I mean, the realistic uh, approach is to go to Congress and get the money, and they don't not give you true. the money. Not true. Not true. You what, what, Not true. And in fact, he's now doing I mean, he moved the what $5 I told dollars. him to please do during the transition, what I told him repeatedly his first year in office. And what I wrote about in Trump We Trust, what was so great about his campaign was that other than re repealing and replacing Obamacare, Every one of his promises was 100% within the authority of the president. Canceling those trade deals, mm -hmm. um, taxing remittances. I mean, they, they're all taunting him. You would think just the left taunting him would lead him to tax the remittances about the, I'm going to build the wall, Mexico will pay for it. I'm, you guys may not be hate watchers. I watch nothing but CNN and MSNBC. Because Hashtag never CNN. We yeah, watch I so you don't have to. I prefer MSNBC. See, you like, to, you like a good laugh. Oh, yes. I it's love hilarious. to hate Chris I love when they get worked up. I posted a picture. We were watching <laughs> Trump at the UN, oh and, and one of my uh, liberal taunters said, "You're why aren't you watching Fox News? I'm like, because the MSNBC uh, tears in, in their eyes is so much more fun <laughs> yeah. to watch. Uh, I, I like watching someone who's a bigger ass than me. And Chris Cuomo certainly fits that, that <laughs> Pretty bill. Pretty much yeah. all of you know. No, I know there's something the matter with me. I like to watch things I hate. <laughs> but you you have the same defect. Um, so the big thing is, and you hear it all the time, Mexico was going to pay for it. Hey, whatever happened to Mexico? And the great Chris Kobach is the one who came up with how Mexico pays for it. And it reminds, the re taxing remittances is such a great issue for Republicans because it gets the issue out there that we are having... It used to be $20 billion a year. $30 billion, I'm not misstating that, billion dollars is sucked out of the American economy and sent back to Carlos Slim in Mexico every year by both legal and illegal, but mostly illegal immigrants with with all of the, you know, welfare they're they're collecting, working at slave wages, taking American jobs, sending money back to their grandmothers in Chiapas. It is 100% within the authority of the President of the United States using the Treasury Authority, <clears throat> excuse me, to tax, put a 10% tax on that. You've paid for the wall in, in less than 10 years with them sending $30 billion back. And it's an issue I promise you Democrats don't want the American people to know about. $30 billion sucked out of the economy being sent back to Mexico by illegal aliens taking American jobs. 10% tax, that is 100% within the authority of the executive branch. He does not need Congress for that. He does not need Congress to build the wall as, haha, we've suddenly discovered, I've been telling him all this time, you're commander-in-chief. It's defend the borders. It isn't bomb innocent civilians in Syria. I don't know why Americans got... Move the money. Move yeah, the money. You can attack... Everybody thinks you can bomb Grenada. You can invade Grenada. You can bomb Iraq. You can do all this stuff as commander-in-chief, but you can't protect America's own borders? Of course you can. You know. Direct the Department of Defense to build it, and how is he finally doing it? The way I've been telling him to do it through the campaign, through his first year of office. And can he do it without a liberal judge somewhere blocking it? For one thing, he has more power than a liberal judge, and I think this has gotten out of control. Every one of those, the Muslim ban, the wall, uh, 
um, the restrictions on on uh, uh, phony asylum applicants. Everyone that's made it to the Supreme Court. Yeah, just fast track it to the Supreme been Court. Upheld. He track. has been upheld. So th- this this uh, seems like more of a brother. I figured this out. This is more like a uh, my my younger brother won't do right. I wish he would get. You know, I wish he'd keep his job. I wish he would do the things he promises to do at the family reunion. He doesn't. I still love him. I still want him to do well. well. Now you're pushing it. <laughs> I mean, right? Okay, I mean, maybe I still... this. It's like having a teenage son. <laughs> I still want him to do good, but, there is you know, no, there I have is to no identify the bad. personal affection, let me put it that way. <laughs> but um, there is a lot of affection for the country. And, and look, I thought the country was over when... When, when it's hard to believe now, but when Romney lost, he was the best on immigration in 2012. You forget that now, easy to forget. Man, has he flipped on us. Um, in any event, with four more years of Obama, uh, I just thought that's it. They're going to be pedal to the metal bringing in immigrants to vote for them. They flipped California. They flipped Virginia. They flipped Nevada. They have flipped state after state. They're working not, on Texas. Not through the, that's right. Working not through Texas. their good ideas. Do not be fooled by this. They're going, oh, and, you know, liberals struggled, and finally Americans agreed with them through the power of their rhetoric. No, they couldn't get Americans to vote for them, so they brought in ringers, and it has going faster under Trump than it did under Obama. There are more illegal aliens coming in under Trump, if you can believe it. Um, I love his tweets. I love I love the country more, and we have to, well, as the title of this conference is, hold his feet to the fire to get him to do... I don't think we're going to get anything out of him second term. It's going to be... All he's going to be doing is promoting, you know, Ivanka's shoe company. Well, but all, look, let's agree on all of that for the sake of, of <laughs> pressing forward. It, all of that said, you could not ask, you could not cast characters better suited to get him reelected yes. than this, this batch of Democrats yes. that they've got running on the other side. Yes. They're out crazy yes. one another as we speak. I was trying to figure out yesterday, why is Pelosi doing this? And I think it's they figured an impeachment was easier than flying out to Mount Rushmore with, you know, a pick and an axe and actually carving Trump's face into Mount Rushmore. No, let's just stage another <laughs> insane impeachment inquiry. I, I'm you, trying to figure out if they're trying to protect Joe Biden or they're trying to uh, kill him. off his I candidates. Agree, yeah. I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree. Because I think, this announcement yesterday gets his story off the front pages. And I talk about it. No, it, it, it At least it, for a it minute. It highlights the Biden thing. Most people had no idea that Biden's corrupt son right. had this no. corrupt deal in the Ukraine. And look, if Trump did anything wrong, it's what's weird about it here is it's exactly parallel to what Biden did. Biden talks to the Ukrainian president about corruption using the threat of foreign aid in order to get them to pull a prosecutor off an investigation of Biden's son. Now you have Trump talking to the Ukrainian president about corruption, saying you ought to look into something that's corrupt that involves our country. So it's it's exactly parallel. Foreign aid to deal with corruption, but Trump's son isn't working and isn't implicated in anything happening in Ukraine. It is so much worse, and 99.9% of Americans did not know about this little corrupt... And, and, and it's interesting, I was just reading the transcript, because you told me they just posted it. Um, one of the things Trump says, and I agree with him on this, look, when he talks, there's very little I disagree with, particularly when he says Maxine Waters has a very low IQ. The tweets I absolutely love. I would like to make him spokesman at the RNC. I would just like Chris Kobach to actually do get stuff done. Um, but when he says to the Ukrainian president, you got to see Biden bragging about this. And I do recommend to all of you, in fact, you guys should find We've it. Played play it. it up. We've played oh, it. Yeah, he, we have. That's unbelievable. This is how people get in trouble. This this macho boasting. And I Laughing. told him, if 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 that prosecutor isn't off by the time I leave this country, I'm looking at my watch. I'm going to be here for six more hours. I'm leaving without you getting any foreign aid. And you know what, folks? Before I left, they had fired that prosecutor. If you're going to be Mr. Macho and talk about it, wow, I think people are going to notice that what you were being so macho about was to call a prosecutor off who was looking into a company 
that implicated your son. Isn't that how most petty criminals get arrested? They brag about yes. it to mom and them. Yes. I mean, everybody, oh, yeah, I did that. You see that on the news? I did that. Well, and, and, yes. the, the, and it occurs to me, the other parallel, and I've not thought about that one, the Joe Biden, the other parallel is for two years, the Chris Cuomo's of the world, the hashtag never CNN's were telling us that we, we must investigate whether a presidential candidate had an, uh, a, an unfortunate and potentially illegal, irresponsible conversation with a foreign power. In this case, his son talking to Russian operatives in Trump Tower. They, we must get right. to the bottom of that to find out if something went wrong. Right. Now, with Joe Biden, they say, oh, no, there's nothing there. Don't right. worry about it. Don't worry about the Joe Biden Oh, yeah. I would l also like to point out one of the greatest things they say. See, this is why we, you know, we have a little advantage watching MSNBC. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> Their big thing at the New York Times and MSNBC is, this has been investigated and no wrongdoing was done. Wait a second. Who when was, was it that? investigated by? It was investigated by the Obama administration. Do you think if there was some wrongdoing in the Trump administration, accused wrongdoing, and we said, what are you talking about? Jeff Sessions investigated that. <laughs> exactly. That is how they would respond, and they would never stop laughing. That is what they're trying to pull no on us. No one self-investigates successfully. Right. Right. You know, right. That doesn't right. really happen. Unless you're a Democrat. Or a but that's what they're talking about. That's what they're talking about. Oh, and maybe, you know, the Ukrainian president, quote, investigated when Obama, the Obama administration was holding back foreign aid. That parallelism is the same other than Trump isn't doing it to protect a son, which is kind of miraculous. <laughs> All right. So the last book was Resistance is Futile. And, you know, you know, us insatiables were like, well, when's the next one? It's been a year, mm -hmm. Anne. Come on. Yeah. I know. Well, usually I take my sort of pattern. I don't know if there is a pattern. I just, when the mood strikes me, <laughs> I go into hiding and write a book. But but it has often, for many years, one, book, year off, book, year off. But, and I wrote three in a row. Adios America, In Trump We Trust, Resistance is Futile. And at this point, I mean, they won't get off. Resistance is Futile is a great book because they, it's everything they talk about there's no, and you don't need to know who Nellie Orr is. I know you two yeah. do, but probably a lot of you. There's just so much boring stuff. Um, the, the quote conservative network gets so into the weeds on boring stuff. No, resistance is futile. It's short, quick. It gives you the answer without having to know the idiotic details. Lots of pictures. <laughs> it's a nice coffee to know. God bless you, Ann Coulter. Thank you, Ann. We love you. Thank yeah. you for being love on with us. Love you, and I love Alabama. I'll think of you when I'm watching Come Randall Maddow. Yes. You, okay. got, you got family down there, so we got, we got to get Ann to I Birmingham. Know. I know. I love Be our Alabama. Guest. We'll, 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 we're going to invite you. We'll yeah. get, Here we'll you get go. John, John Longshore. You, you people don't know him because he's up in Montgomery, but he's a very big sports radio host, and that's my fam, my cousin. No, Lots I'm, tell, I'm calling John. I'm saying we're getting Ann into town. I'm not we'll even Alabama enough. I don't even have cousins in the state of Alabama, and Coulter <laughs> does. Thank you, Ann.